Listen, the Blood Moon is really important in your game, and I'm going to teach you why you can use the Blood Moon to your advantage and all the tips and tricks surrounding the Blood Moon. It's a very chaotic thing. It's a Blood Moon. Also, check out the room. I made the room Blood Moon theme for the video. Let's get into it. Let's talk about some of the basics of Blood Moons. A Blood Moon is a game mechanic that resets the game world, respawning enemies and the environment, and that occurs at 12 a.m. in-game time, midnight, while actively playing in the overworld. This will take place after 2 hours, 48 minutes, and 15 seconds, or you can round it up to 3 hours, of real-world playtime or 7 days in-game. For those that don't know, in the world of Tears of the Kingdom, time flows differently, as 1 minute in real life is equivalent to 1 hour in in game. This natural blood moon is triggered by a timer in the game code that counts uninterrupted playtime. What I mean by uninterrupted playtime is that you just have to have the game on without any menus, maps, cutscenes, sleeping, or weapon hot swapping. Basically, you want to keep the game running the entire time. The mechanic of the blood moon is not only for respawning enemies, but also allows the game to fix itself before potential crashes. And I'll get more into the whole entire game crashing kind of thing with the blood moon later on in the video. One of the big myths that people have when it comes to getting a blood moon to progress is by simply going to a campfire and sleeping there nonstop over and over again, that actually does not progress the time. In this example, if I'm gonna speed this up, you can see that I am resetting at a campfire over and over again, and I do it like over seven times. So that kind of throws away the myth that, hey, if I just keep sleeping over and over or resting until a new day, it's gonna happen. No, it doesn't happen unless it is already programmed to happen the next day. Now here's an example where I have a blood moon that I know is going to happen because I saved earlier in the day before it happened. So if I go ahead and sleep right before that blood moon, then you can see that, okay, the blood moon is now going to trigger versus me just spamming sleep. So keep that in mind that you cannot just rush into a blood moon by sleeping over and over again. It has to be set for that day, just like the time I mentioned. So there's a trick that you can avoid the blood moon and make it progress to the next day. And you're going to be able to do this when it comes very close to time. So in my game currently, there is a blood moon that's happening, as you can see by the sky, and you can see the time is progressing very close to midnight. You can first avoid it by going to the depths. By going to the depths, that's going to stop the blood moon from triggering. And when you teleport back, I do it really close to time and I come back exactly at midnight, you can see that, look, the blood moon did not occur. Nothing happened. We didn't get any cutscene. Another trick that you can do is by waiting close to time, then hopping right inside of a shrine, and then coming out of the shrine, and then you will not see the blood moon. Now, I also wanted to experiment with this in a cave. So as time was getting very close, I did walk into a cave, but you can see that the blood moon does trigger as I'm running into this cave. You can see the whole ground and the stuff go red, and it begins. Now, I previously went into a cave earlier in other footage, and I noticed that the earlier you are in a cave, the Blood Moon can be avoided, but I would like you all to test this exact section out of when you show up in a cave versus being close to a cave when the Blood Moon's about to happen. It's a little tricky, but I think caves can also do this based on my various footage here about the caves. What if you just wanted to wait naturally for a Blood Moon to happen? Well, there's also a trick for that. Now, I did mention that the Blood Moon takes about three hours in order for it to occur. But let's say you wanted to go out or someone came over or you have a barbecue. Well, you can use the shrine to your advantage for this example. So all you have to do is just go inside of a shrine and just stand there. Literally leave your game on AFK. Now, in order to have a proper AFK in your game without your switch going on sleep, press the home button, go into your system settings and then go down to sleep mode. You're going to want to make sure that the auto sleep option is set to never. That way your game can run consistently. If you leave your character long enough in the shrine just waiting, you can walk out of the shrine and then teleport over to a campfire or go to a cooking pot and you can advance the day. And if enough time has passed, just like we mentioned for a blood moon to occur, it should happen right after you go to sleep or advance the time forward. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying these kinds of videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It's real quick, just, just hit it. So let's talk about one of the big benefits of the Blood Moon, and this is gonna be known as critical cooking, but exactly how do you critical cook? Well, when a Blood Moon is destined to happen and you know it's gonna happen, wait for 11.30. Literally 11.30 p.m. at night via the game is going to be when you're going to be able to cook critical food. So what I like to do is if I see the Blood Moon rising a little bit earlier than that, I immediately will go towards a cooking spot and will start to cook food. By cooking food right before a Blood Moon, that is gonna give you a lot more 
your benefits, meaning the time on the buffs will go up, the amount of hearts you'll get per meal will go up. A lot of things are going to be interesting that you would get via doing this at 1130 than going and doing this beforehand. So save your big cooking before a blood moon. Now, here's something very interesting about cooking and the blood moon and how you can keep cooking, because obviously the more you cook, you're going to be pausing the screen and time's going to move a little slower. But eventually at a certain point, time will slowly move forward till the blood moon is going to kick in. So what you want to do is you want to start cooking from 1130 and you want to stop close to about 1150 or around 1155. Right after that, you're going to want to enter a shrine. By entering the shrine, like we mentioned before, the blood moon will skip. Now, because of the skip, you can walk back out and the blood moon has delayed to the next day. So what you want to do is you're going to repeat your cooking again and again until you feel you've cooked enough food to let that blood moon run. So basically, it's a critical cooking chain, if you would like to call it, and it's going to be beneficial to stocking up all your overpowered food. Did you know that there are actually two cutscenes for the blood moon in Tears of the Kingdom? One with Zelda always announcing about the blood moon and one without her. And after a certain point, it gets really annoying to keep hearing Zelda talk about the blood moon because I already understand what it's about. So in order to get rid of her, you're going to have to beat all four temples or dungeons and continue the main story quest line that'll lead you into Hyrule Castle. I'm not going to spoil what exactly happens, but just do that. Follow the main quest line and you'll know that the blood moon's going to disappear after a certain point. That's why I have cutscenes in my game where I don't have Zelda. Now there is something that does cause a fake simulated blood moon to occur in the game, and that's going to be whenever you encounter Gloom Hands. As you can see, here is where I approach a spot where Gloom Hands shows up. And as soon as Gloom Hands appears, I'm going to turn to the sky and you can see that oh, all of a sudden the sky is getting red and moving really fast. But you can notice that there's not really a moon. It's more like a little layering over the sun. So you can see that sun over there. Now, in order for you to get rid of this fake blood moon, it's not going to respawn anything. It's not going to cause anything to happen. You just have to beat Gloom Hands simply to get rid of this. And something I like to do is you can either use AOEs, elemental attacks, or you can simply use a strong powerful bow and i'm using my bow with a 40 attachment gibdo bones to take it out pretty quick and then right after that you're going to have phantom ganon show up so the the fake blood moon is still going to be happening above you just go ahead beat up fake ganon by you could either dodge or just i'm going for headshots here non-stop with my bow and after that phantom ganon disappears you're going to be able to have the sky clear up so this is just for you not to be confused with the real blood moon in case you were wondering so if you want to trigger a blood moon whenever you want, basically to reset something, you can come over here to any cave that has a rock wall formation. The one I'm exactly standing in is going to be located right over here at the Tanagar Canyon West Cave. So you can see exactly where I am on the map. It's south of the Rito Village and it's across Hyrule Ridge right over here. And to make things easier, I dropped a Traveler's Medallion here so that I can always come here anytime I want. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save right over here. Here. I always like to save right before I pull this trick off. And what you want to have is a multi-shot bow. Very easy to get off any lino. It doesn't matter what you kill. And what you're going to want also is an opal. The fun part is we're going to just hop off like this, go into your little arrow time, and then boom. And you're just going to basically lag out your game. <laughs> That's literally it. And this is going to cause the entire system to be like, whoa, we need to do a memory reset. This game is lagging like crazy. Like, yeah, you see how bad that is? That is bad. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and then reload the save. I just made and now the system is like whoa we got to reset all the memory here things have gone in absolutely chaotic and when we load back in you could see the blood moon is now triggering there you go <laughs> And just like that, you have reset the entire game. Everything is respawned. Weapons have respawned. So if you don't want to lose any durability on your bow or lose any materials like the opals, then this is going to be what you need to do. Now, there are a ton of mini bosses in the game that you'll find throughout the entire map. You'll find Gleox, Linos, Flux Constructs, and even rematches of temple bosses in the depths. But in this example, I just wanted to show you what a mini boss is going to be like when a Blood Moon occurs. So I'm heading towards this Gleok right now, and I'm just going to go ahead and beat it up and knock it out and destroy it. Okay, so this boss is now dead. It's 8.30 p.m., and we're going to see just how terrifying it is when a Blood Moon happens as it shows up. All right, Blood Moon's in the sky, 11.35. Let's wait for the cutscene at 12 and see what happens. Here we go. Oh my gosh, that is terrifying. The boss boss right in front of you. <laughs> 
And these are not just for Gleox. They happen for Linos. They happen for Hinox. They happen for Maldugas. Anything you can find. Flux constructs in the sky and all the monsters in the depths also respawn. This is going to happen with every single mini boss in the game. One of my favorite places to go after a Blood Moon resets for mini bosses actually is going to be the floating Colosseum underneath in the depths. This is pretty much the spot where I get to keep fighting the entire Linos over and over again. And if you didn't know, this is where you're going to be getting Majora's Mask in the game. So I have a lot of fun just coming in here and going ahead and just beating up Linos. It's 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 a lot of fun. And it's a good way to farm a lot of materials for these Linos. So yeah, make sure you go ahead and drop a travel medallion here. That we can always come down to this spot. Now in this section of the video, I want to go over some examples of different things in the game that is going to happen before a Blood Moon and things that happen after the Blood Moon. Let's start with pristine weapon statues or the ghost soldiers down in the depths. Now in this location underneath the depths, I'm going to head over to this nice big stone structure here that's going to have three ghost statues on it. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to grab their weapons and just throw them off. A Blood Moon passes, then I'm going to come back here and see after the Blood Moon that all the soldiers are are here again with weapons. So this is what you need to do when you want to recycle weapons on ghost soldiers. By the way, we have an entire video explaining the crazy system of all the pristine weapons down here. There's way better weapons than these ones. So you're going to want to check out that video for information on this. Now let's talk about pose. Now, I also wanted to test out Pose and see if they would respond during a Blood Moon. So I went down to the one underneath Hyrule Castle area in the depths over there. And right by this light route, there were a bunch of Pose. So I went to collect every single one of them. Now, I waited and right after the Blood Moon occurred, I went back to that Poe area and I noticed there weren't as many Pose as there were before, which makes me think this is based on the tick system. So the further you are away from Pose, they have a chance to respawn 1% chance over every second so that's the reason why it's not based on the blood moon if you notice anything different feel free to comment down below but that's what i got from my testing i also wanted to test out ore deposits to see if blood moon actually does reset these so i went over to this cave before the blood moon happened and started to break a bunch of ore deposits after breaking all the ore deposits i walked away from the cave a blood moon happened and then i revisited the entire cave on the outside the ore deposit was still there when I went inside, all the ore deposits were actually not there at all. They were, it was just gone just the way I broke them. So it looks like Blood Moons don't respawn ore deposits. So keep that in mind for the surface. Next, I decided to test out an enemy camp. I'm going to be heading over to Lookout Landing and I want to just make it known ahead of time that I did clean out this entire camp. There are no more enemies in this area. So as I arrive at Lookout Landing, you can see that it is completely empty. Now, what I want to do here is just destroy a bunch of items because in a way, this is going to be showing what's going to happen when I blow up all the items, break everything, uh, see what happens. Does it respawn? What respawns when the enemy camp resets? So I go ahead and break every single thing here, explosions, crates, you name it. And right before this next clip, I want to let you know that I moved away and come back over time. So this is what happened. OK, so I just wanted to say all the items in this current area where I am in the Hyrule Field Skyview Tower have reappeared. But that's because the game has a one second tick time that brought them back. So this has nothing to do with the Blood Moon. These are here right before the Blood Moon. Just the spiky ball didn't appear yet, so that's going to have to come very soon. So I'm just going to wait here until the Blood Moon happens at 12 o'clock and we'll get to see what exactly happens. The big silver boss book goblin should appear right in front of me. Let's wait. OK, I'm waiting, but it's thunderstorming, so I just had to turn this on so I don't die. Also, real quick, I should probably move this so this doesn't blow up and kill me. There we go. OK, now let's wait for the boss book goblin. Okay, hey, it's me again. 11.35, no time has passed for you because of editing, right? Here's the Blood Moon, it's happening, and I'm gonna stand right over here. And just as we predict, we should get a silver boss bow Coblin showing up. I don't know if that steel ball counts as a weapon or an object. So I'm curious if that's gonna show up as soon as the Blood Moon happens. All right, here we go. Blood Moon cutscene, and I'm just gonna fast forward past it. Okay, and everyone's here. <laughs> and the question, oh, that does count as a weapon. Oh my gosh. Okay, there we go. We know that uh, the steel balls are counted as weapons. So that is your example of weapons respawning. That is actually something really good to know. That is a weapon. Very good info. All right, well, you saw all the enemies and steel balls, including regular weapons, all respawn. 
So I want to do another experiment before the blood moon and chop a bunch of trees and grab their apples. And what we're going to do is basically chop a bunch of trees. So I'm just going to kind of clear out as many trees as I can. And then we're going to wait for the blood moon to happen. Quick update. I have chopped every single tree and picked up as many apples as I can from here. I'll just be standing here waiting to see what happens. And it's 1140. It's rising above and we're going to see if anything respawns in this area. We, we did rocks, but now we're doing plant life and fruits. Here it comes. If you pay attention and look, all the trees I cut are still cut. But there are some trees that are showing up here, but they look a little sus because I remember coming here before and killing off some of these trees and they should get out the ground and attack me. Yes, because they are enemies and it looks like the enemies have only respawned. So you get apples that do respawn technically. This is technical, okay? So there's your answer and that does answer the question. Now you know that it only works on the trees that are enemies. So before the blood moon, also by the apple trees on Satori Mountain, there's also this ox by this little puddle of water here. And I just went ahead and killed it. After a blood moon happened and I came back to this location, I was able to see this nice ox again. And I went ahead and shot it, killed it and got myself some nice meat. So yes, animals also respawn with the blood moon and you can get yourself some nice cooking materials and some good food from them. Get that prime meat. Now you're an expert at the blood moon, but are you an expert at this? Check out this video over here and click on it. Seriously, it, you'll, you'll learn something from it.